Fantastic. <laughs> okay, um, so we've been going through a series on the news of God, and this is our fourth week in the series. Um, so we've done El Shaddai, God Almighty, and what were the other two? Jehovah Shalom. Yeah. yeah, Jehovah Shalom, God is peace. And last week was Jehovah Jireh, um, God is provider. And this week we're going to do um, Jesus is the word. So we're going to go a little bit of a turn here. Um, and I'm really excited about tonight. Uh, I, I want to pray one more time. Just, uh, Father, thank you for um, just so many gathered here to um, worship you, to be encouraged. Um, so I pray that you would be pleased and glorified with this space, with all of our hearts. God, we look to you. We put our hope in you and trust in you. Um, you would speak through your word tonight, God, and give us ears to hear what you have to say. Yeah, we lift all this up in Jesus' name. Amen. So you can go um, in your phones or on your phones to John 1. Um, so John is the fourth gospel of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. And it's, it's written by John, uh, who's the youngest, youngest of the disciples. And I think it was written the last of all the gospels. And it was estimated to be written between 70 AD and 100 AD. So, so decades after the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And kind of unique about the book of John is it contains a lot of John's reflections um, about the life of Christ. And so the gospel accounts are a little bit more like to the events of Jesus and his life. And these... This, this account also contains events from, life, from the Christ, um, but it also contains a lot of John's reflections on the person of Jesus. So um, the beginning of the book of John is um, John's kind of going straight to the point about who Jesus is. Um, and I think it's, it's just interesting that if you read now that first line in the book of John, says that in the beginning was the word. And thinking about how this was written decades after the life of Jesus. And so John's had plenty of time to reflect on what he wants to say about Jesus. And this is how he comes out of the gate swinging, is to say that in the beginning was the word. Um, and I, hey, Chris, <laughs> glad you found this. Um, so, it lands on us like when i read that it's a little bit disorienting what what does it mean that jesus is the word um and so my goal for tonight is for that picture to become more clear about what does it mean that jesus is the word and how does that like encapsulate something fundamental about who this is um how and then i want that to be deeply personal too i would love to see us encouraged in jesus as the word and even just to reflect on God's character, um, that Jesus is the word made flesh and what God's words are like and how we can trust them just as we trust in the person of Christ. Um, so let's go to the beginning of, of John here. It says, in the beginning was the word and the, God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was I want to stop there. So one thing I noticed about the writing of John, and this is not just John in particular, but some of the authors in scripture, there's a lot of this like juxtaposition of seemingly statements that don't necessarily seem to fit together, but then they're like juxtaposed and somehow at the same time. Um, and so in that first line, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. And so, um, spoiler, the word is referring to Jesus. But um, just that those two phrases, how the word was with God and at the same time, the word was God. Um, and a lot of people kind of go to this passage in John um, to begin to develop their sort of doctrine of the church, how Jesus was both with God uh, meaning that he had relationship with God the Father, and at the same time, he was God himself. Um, verse 3, it says, All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. 
again, I don't even, it sort of sounds like a philosophical set of statements. Like it's kind of covering a couple of bases. It's saying both that all things were made through him. There wasn't a single thing made that was not, um, that was not, that was without him. So you could say not only was um, all of creation created through Jesus Christ as the word, um, but also Jesus himself is not created. There is not a created thing that was created without Jesus. It's a little bit like sticky, but um, it's just, it's interesting in these first couple of lines that is not going to the beginning of Jesus's life as a person on earth, but he's going all the way back to Genesis. So if you've read Genesis 1, it begins um, with, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And um, they're written in different languages. So John's written in Greek, but that phrase is the Greek phrase of what was used in Genesis in the beginning. So John is intentionally kind of, kind of pointing back to the story in Genesis. And he's putting Jesus there. He's saying, in the beginning was the word. And um, it, it kind of can lead you into an interesting question on the creation story, because um, one of the unique things about the creation story is that God creates everything by his word. He speaks it into being, um, which I, it's fascinating to me. And it, it also speaks of kind of the, the worthiness and the perfect perfection of God's words. Um, like when, when we, when I say like, oh, uh, next Friday, what am I doing next Friday? Maybe next Friday I'm going to be at the boys' barbecue eating dinner. Um, that's like a word that I'm proclaiming. I don't actually do it um, to be faithful to my word. And and God is so faithful to His word that His words create what He's saying. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. Um, and, and somehow in the person of Jesus, like God's word is so perfect that Jesus coming from God's mouth is himself a person who is God himself. Um, so God help us understand some of these things. Um, let's move on to verse four. It says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. The light and the darkness is not overcoming. Um, and so when this book was written between 70 AD and 100, um, this is after it ascended and then the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples at Pentecost. Um, the church exploded in Jerusalem and it spread from there as the disciple of Jesus, Jesus' command to go and make disciples of all nations. It also happened by way of persecution and the disciples were scattered in that way. And so, yeah, a lot of the New Testament we read, especially in the book of Acts, um, through the life of Paul and other apostles, how the gospel of Jesus spread from Jerusalem all around the world um, and to Gentiles as well. And, and so this was written in that context. So John is giving, he's testifying that even now decades after Jesus had lived on earth, that the darkness has not overcome that light. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I believe that this book was written um, to a church to remind them of the centrality of the person of Jesus. And I think it's, it's, it's when is it not fitting to be reminded of the centrality of Jesus? I think it's true today as well of our church that we need to be reminded as believers um, to persevere in our faith and um, and to remember that Jesus is this light of darkness. And 2,000 plus years later, the darkness is still not overcome. Um, verse 6, it says, They're from God, whose name is John. So the author of the book is John. This is another John, John the Baptist. Um, it says in verse 7, He came as a witness to bear witness, as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. There in verse 10, again, we're kind of going back to how the world was made through Jesus. 
somehow. Jesus is the word who is there at the beginning with God, who all things were created through him. Um, and yet, even though Jesus is so integral in the world that was created, to not know him. Um, so one of the things this leads me to do is to look into the Old Testament about how, you know, God is, is working with his people, the Israelites there, and, um, and trying to see where is Christ. Um, and I, I think sort of having my ears perk at the sound of like, oh, the word of the Lord. Um, and thinking like, what does that have to do with the person who just, that he's described as the word? And he was in creation, even though creation did not know him until he was revealed in Jesus uh, when he became flesh. So, yeah, so that's verse 10 and, and then 11. He came to his own and his own people. And, and again, in that context, you had, um, like, especially we've been talking in church on Sundays about the Apostle Paul, much of a heart he had for the people of Israel. Um, and wanting them to know who Jesus was. And yet they, they would, and they were hardened, their hearts were hardened against who Jesus was. And because of that, the gospel went to the Gentiles, um, myself included. Uh, and it's saying, it's saying here, like in verse 11, he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. 12, and now we're gonna get into how like our belonging in, in the body of Christ is not that we were born of a descendant of the, the people of Israel, but um, it's by faith that we are, we are a part of the body of Christ. All who did receive him, verse 12, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will, of, nor of the will of man, but of God. Um, and then verse 14, which is just like this yeah. big part became flesh and dwelt among us. Um, I want to go here from here to a passage in Isaiah, which if you know well for a few years now, we studied this passage in our retreat um, when we, I think we were down at Oceanside. Isaiah 55. And I want to begin in verse 10. It says, For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Um, and a lot of Isaiah is, is sort of um, a prophecy of Jesus. And, and this, this is where I'm starting to see how the word become flesh and dwelling among us. That in the, in the way that God is saying in Isaiah, this is what my word is like. When it goes out, it doesn't return to me empty, but it goes forth and it accomplishes the purpose for which I sent it. And the like the perfect example person of Jesus Christ, who is the word of God made flesh. Um, and just as certainly as God spoke in creation, it, it was so, and it was good. So it was with Jesus. He was that perfectly a, a reflection of who God was, um, that he himself. Yeah. And just continuing a little bit in Isaiah 55, it says in verse 12, you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And so somehow in the, in the work of Jesus Christ, who is the perfect word of God, who became flesh and dwelt among us, um, you see this thing uh, in his creation that Jesus is succeeding in the work for which he was sent. 
And if you look at the life of Christ, he kind of refers to that a lot, um, that, that he has this sense of a calling of what he needs to do about when the timing was, what, what were the sorts of things he needed to be devoted to, he needed to be about his father's business. Um, so he's like sticking to kind of God's word on his life. Um, and through the work of Jesus, um, we all get to share in this joy, going out in joy and being led forth in peace. Um, and then these images of even creation um, being redeemed, that the hills and mountains are forth into singing, the trees um, clapping their hands. And, and I was reflecting on how just the last couple of weeks and the different um, including um, Jehovah Shalom, and how we, and, and I think every person that spoke on these different names of God did a really good job of seeing both that name um, begin about God in the Old Testament and see its fulfillment in the birth of Christ. And so you, you have with Jesus um, being kind of this epitome of how we are able to receive God's peace in our hearts. Um, and we talked about just how Jesus was able to calm the storm um, and, and how he over creation. And uh, yeah, so that's Isaiah 55 and kind of where you see the language of God's word and how that might be related to the person of Jesus Christ. And there are also um, some other points in John, where you see the word and Jesus, it's like kind of looks like they're being confused or conjoined into one thing. So in John 8 31 it says, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And then all the way in another chapter, 15 7, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Um, and so, yeah, you, you get both Jesus asking us to abide in his word, his words, and also to abide. Um, and maybe one of the, the last kind of passages around the book of John I wanted to look at was the beginning of the book of Hebrews, which is also in the New Testament. And it, begins similarly to the book of, um, let me see, so in verse one of Hebrews, and this is probably a different author than John, but we don't know exactly who it is. It says, verse one, long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. So again, that theme of the world being created through Jesus um, and how like the Old Testament contains how God spoke to his people through the and And now somehow he has spoken to us perfectly um, in these last days by his son, um, not just in the words of Jesus, but also in the life. It's like, all of Jesus, his life, his work, his ministry, his teachings, kind of encapsulate this word of God um, going forth from the Father, um, dwelling among us on earth and changing us, changing our hearts, awakening our faith, um, being light and life and redeeming us, our relationships and um, also our world creation itself. Um, it goes on in, in Hebrews in verse three, it says, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications, purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So sort of at the beginning of that book of Hebrews, the author is making this case for Christ as being greater than the angels and sort of in this special place by himself as God. 
And John is doing the same thing at the beginning of the book of John by calling Jesus this word of God who was with him at the beginning and is also God himself. Um, so those are some things about how Jesus is the word. Um, let's see if I want to finish up on any more of these verses. Yeah, I can read it from verse 14 to 18. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, who, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. Another one of those phrases that's like kind of throws you off a little bit. Like he comes after me, ranks, you know, ranks before me because he was before me. And somehow like the person of Jesus came after John the Baptist, who was, was preparing a way for Jesus's ministry and who wasn't himself like but was pointing people to the light uh, who came after John. Um, but Jesus also came before John because he was with God in the beginning of God. So that was verse 16. For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given to us, grace and tr truth came through Jesus Christ. And so there's a parallel there, there with the beginning of Hebrews where it talks about how God spoke to us through the sin and the last days through his son. Here it's saying the law was given through Moses. Um, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Verse 18, no one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. And so in the person of Jesus Christ, God makes himself known um, in a way that like Jesus is always an integrated part of creation and everything that was created was created through Jesus. Um, we, didn't, we didn't have eyes to see him or know him. And, and so Jesus was sent like a word out of God's mouth among us to accomplish the purpose for which he was sent. Um, and that's our joy and our peace and life and light and ultimately to give glory to God's grace, um, that we all, might all like see this radiance of God and the exact imprint of his nature in the person of Christ. Um, so that kind of concludes some of my reflections for tonight about Jesus being the word. I hope it was helpful. We're gonna break out into small groups and my goal is to go until probably 8.20 to 8.50, we're going to end in worship. And my other goal for tonight was to really to lead us into worship, um, to hold up the person of Jesus and his character and what God's words are like um, and how they are so much greater than our own word um, that, that God's word goes forth and it's a person and it's Jesus who is God himself. Um, and that gives you how perfect God's faithfulness is, um, how true he's going to be to his promises. Um, because even in him speaking this, it's true in the work of Christ. Um, so I have a few questions for us, but they can really just get you started. I think the challenge for all of us now is like, how do we take this word personally? How do we receive it in our hearts that that Jesus is the word. Um, I hope that we're able to like kind of wrestle a little bit with how disorienting it might be, but um, yeah, I feel like we're trying to grow at something that John sees clearly. And so I'm hoping that we can, by God's grace, see it clearly too, um, and that we would be encouraging. So I have three questions for us. We'll go for about half an hour, um, just, Go ahead, discuss in your groups. Um, the first, what do you think John intends by naming Jesus the word? And I began tonight reflecting on how, you know, John could have began his book about it in so many different ways. Um, and in wanting to describe who Jesus, Jesus is, the like first thing is the word. Um, so what do you think John intends by that? 
And the second question is, John harkens back to Genesis and places Jesus in the beginning with God. In what ways do you see that Jesus was in the world be before he became flesh? And the third question is, how does Jesus being the word minister to you today? And I want you to spend maybe more of your time on that question. Um, and it might take you some time to really figure out, like, what does this have to do with me today? Um, but let me just pray for us and we'll break up into groups. I'm going to write the questions into the chat. Um, and if any of you want to, I could text it to you as well. So, Father, thank you for tonight. I pray that you would lead us into worship. Reflect on Jesus, the word. The word made flesh to dwell among us. Um, God, I pray that you would open to what John meant by saying these things about Jesus. Would you help us to know the glory of that, about how you spoke to, um, and to your creation in the former days by the prophets, um, and you gave the law through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. In these last days, you've spoken to us by your son. Um, I pray that you would make that deeply personal and relevant to us. Uh, so we ask for your spirit and your wisdom and guidance in these discussions. We lift all this to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.